This is Marketing Jam, a podcast featuring the brightest minds in Canadian marketing. Marketing Jam is brought to you by Cyber Impact, the email marketing platform made specifically for Canadian small businesses. Go to cyberimpact.com forward slash jelly, create a free account, and start sending castle compliant promotional emails in just a few clicks. I want to welcome everyone to the Marketing Jam show. I want to thank you for joining us today. Uh, we have one of uh, my favorite people on the show, Antoine from Cyber Impact. It is an incredible software. Uh, he's an incredible thought leader and uh, he has uh, also been one of our first supporters of the Marketing Jam show from day one. So it's really uh, an honor to have him on here. And of course, this is our first ever uh, Marketing Jam where we are live remote recording this. So uh, thanks to the people at Microsoft and their product Skype, we're able to record this remotely. So Antoine is in the lovely province of Quebec. Uh, I am in British Columbia, and uh, here we are together in a Skype room. That's awesome. awesome. I'm happy to be there. So Antoine, uh, first question I'd like to ask you is, how did you get into marketing? How did you get to the place you are today? Yeah, it's kind of a funny story or um, kind of a random route, I would say. I studied um, kinesiology at university, okay. so nothing to do with marketing, really. Uh, the topic was really interesting, but when I stopped uh, studying and I was looking at career path, I, I knew I didn't want to work in that field. Um, I was also interested at that time in everything that had to do with business. Uh, and I had friends that were like, you know, starting some businesses and that were in sales and all of that. So, you know what? They, they seem to be to do OK. Um, they seem to uh, be able to, to pay the bills and all that. And uh, it seemed to me like like sales was something I could be good at and uh, something that I could make probably a better paycheck than working in my in the field that I, I had studied in. And uh, I'll say it was a good like first step in the world of business. So if I can, if I can learn how to sell, you know, I'll, I'll yeah, it'll be a good a good first step in the in the world of uh, of business. So I did that. I worked in retail. I sell. I sold uh, mattresses. I sold um, okay. uh, pools. You know, like swimming pools, and yeah. they can they can get pricey. You know, like you can. Yeah. I was like twenty something in in my office, closed door, and you know, uh, signing deals of you know. Twenty twenty five thousand dollars. So it was like a great experience. Um, but then at the same time, I started really studying uh, part time, like studying everything that had to do with uh, uh, online marketing. So mm -hmm. I was, um, you know, taking classes on how to build a website, and I was building websites like small websites with the WordPress, and I was learning about SEO, like back in the, mm -hmm. back when SEO was very simple. Um, I was also learning, uh, you know, email marketing with uh, a software called uh, Aweber, like it's the uh, OG mm. of uh, email marketing and uh, also learning about PPC and all, and all that stuff. Uh, so that was probably like 10, 12 years ago. Um, and I was really interested in that. And that, that was kind of a, it became a passion. Um, and then I got offered a, a job as a, as a salesman for an agency that was doing some online marketing for small businesses. So that was my, my transition. Like sales allowed me to do a transition into that online marketing field. Uh, but then when I got there and started, you know, selling the products, I was like a lot more knowledgeable than all of the other sales reps because I was actually very interested in what we were actually doing for, for the, the small businesses. Um, so I started working more, um, you know, on the service side, like actually working for uh, the, the clients. And um, it, it happened that I, I became the SEO and uh, SCM manager at that, uh, at that company. And I, I did well, but, you know, no formal education in marketing or, you know, any of that stuff, but uh, a lot of interest and a lot of time, you know, evenings and, and, and weekends, uh, you know, taking classes on, uh, on my own. Um, and then what, what brought you to the doors of Cyber Impact? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, for me, it was the next logical step. Um, you know, I worked for a long time in, in, in a world that you know very well, uh, Darian, the, the agency world. So, mm -hmm. you know, selling services, 
um, you know, marketing, marketing services. So mm-hmm. basically, you know, selling my, my time and, um, you know, I, I was an employee in that field. Mm-hmm. I was, uh, I've, I've been a freelance. I also, you know, mm-hmm. started my, my own small, uh, small agency and I had, mm-hmm. you know, I had a few employees and, and good, a good, um, uh, good clients. And, and then mm-hmm. I got acquired by a, mm-hmm. a slightly bigger agency, a guy that I, I've known for, for many years and I really trusted him and I really respected his work. Um, and I was mm-hmm. just like overwhelmed <laughs> with the amount mm-hmm. of work that we had to do. So it felt like a, a, good, a good step to do, uh, to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I stayed on board for um, you know, about two years to make sure that it was a smooth uh, transition. But I had never worked in marketing on the client side. You know, I was always mm-hmm. on the agency side. So always working for, you know, trying to divide my time and my, you know, uh, mental uh, output, uh, d- divide it into, you know, many projects and, and many different industries and many different, you know, mm-hmm. clients. And I was really, it, it's, it was great for, for a time, but I was curious about what would it be if I could focus 100% of my energy, talent, you know, mm. um, and, 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 and all of that towards one company, like growing one, mm. one company. And uh, at the same time, I got a call from a guy that I, I, I knew uh, that I've w- worked with. And he said, well, you know, you know, Cyber Impact, I heard of them. I had heard of them uh, before because mm. uh, they, they had been around for, uh, for quite a few, uh, a few years. And uh, he said, would you, you know, would you consider working full time for Cyber Impact? Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, my God, I never thought about that. But it feels mm. like, a, you know, a great timing for me. And uh, mm. I gave him yes. I gave him a number, and uh, <laughs> the, the the number was accepted. I met I met the two the two founders, mm. and it was a, a great fit, uh, because at the same time they also went through the same kind of you know thought process, because mm. Cyber Impact, the company behind Cyber Impact is called Cyber Generation, and it's been mm. in business for 20 years, something like that. Wow. And they were yeah. also an agency. They were doing more mm. websites and. Um, mm-hmm you know, software development, mm. like uh, custom custom apps and custom uh, software yeah. for their clients, a little bit of marketing, but that was not their their strength. Yeah. Um, but they were on, you know, under the same, same kind of model, you know, from project to project and handling, you know, a lot of different clients. Uh, but the first iteration of Cyber Impact, of what Cyber Impact is today, so, you know, it was a lot simpler, um, not mm-hmm. many features, but it was a, a mass email emailing tool for one of their customers that they they did that, developed that something like, you know, 12 years ago. Uh, but part of the deal is that they kept the IP. Um, so mm. they started offering the same, the same software, the same service to all of their customers. And then, you know, mm. Uh, word of mouth, and uh, so it grew or- organically until until the point where they said, "Well, what if we also focused 100% on our, mm-hmm. you know, recurring model, which is always nice, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, mm-hmm. focusing on the product? What if we, um, you know, stopped accepting new uh, new clients for uh, you know service service work? Uh, so that's that's what it decided to do." And uh, I had the same kind of thought process, you know, for my own career at the same time. Mm-hmm. And uh, we both we both met, you know, the right the right people at the right time. And uh, uh, now they wanted someone, you know, uh, running the marketing for Cyber Impact, yeah. the product, and not Cyber yeah. Generation, the agency. And that's what yeah. I, you know, it felt it felt like a great fit. It's awesome. So Antoine, uh, one of my favorite questions, are you a uh, iOS Apple guy or are you a Android user? Or Blackberry, maybe you're keeping it real. No, Android, Android for uh, a very long time. Uh, I've yeah. been using you know, Google's products for so long. Like, um, yeah. you know, everything is connected to my Gmail, like, you know, yeah. AdWords and you know, yeah. analytics and like, everything. So it, it, it felt like more natural to go the Android uh, route, yeah. <laughs> what are some of your favorite apps that you use on the regular? Yeah, I don't know if I'm the most like, you know, tech, well, tech savvy. Uh, I'm not like a early adapter. I don't, I don't, I don't think so. You know, I like things that, that work and that, you know, that, that really, really um, improve my, my life. 
Uh, I'm also like a really outdoorsy guy. So I have like this love and hate relationship with technology, you know, like I love technology. I love what it can do, but also I like to really disconnect, (laughs) you know, at the same time. Um, But I, you know, an app that I, 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 I use every day is uh, like a few a few uh, Google apps. Look, uh, everything is on, is in my calendar, my Google calendar. Mm-hmm. Uh, even when my wife wants me to do something, she has to put it in the calendar. <laughs> like it'll be done. Like you want me to yeah. go like buy something at the store, like or you want yeah. us to go, you know, um, uh, buy like we, we buy big jugs of water and we always yeah. you know run out, so we have to yeah. go to the to the store to fill them up and like. She's like, I don't know, can, can this weekend can we go to buy water? I said, yes, of course, but you know, you know what you have to do. Put it in the calendar. We will go for sure. So uh, mm-hmm. everything in my life is in my calendar. I yeah. also use a uh, Google Keep, so it's yeah. um, it's for like notes and um, mm-hmm. uh, to do lists and and stuff like that. So it's synced on my computer and uh, my mm-hmm. phone. So Google Keep is very good. Uh, mm-hmm. I use Google Drive, you know, all the time. Yeah. Uh, so that's that. Yeah, I think I think that's that's pretty much it. Yeah, those and Google Maps. Yeah, yeah, of course, Google Map. Yeah, because <laughs> I actually yeah. want to get to my destination. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't. And at home, no, Apple Apple Map. No, never. No, heard. no. And do you use a Google Home device and a Chromebook as your hardware? No, it's no. I'm. Uh, it's not a Chromebook. Uh, I, I think I think I would like a Chromebook. Uh, yeah. I don't know if it if it changed. I think it you know it, it only works if it's connected. Uh, so mm-hmm. sometimes I I go I do go places where the connection is not great. Uh, so mm-hmm. that's that's why I like to uh, use Google Drive and make sure that um, I have offline mode <laughs> activated. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. No, I'm and I'm I'm a PC guy. Like I have both actually. I have a PC laptop and I have a um, hmm. a Mac. I like okay. both, but I'm so used yeah. to the user interface. Like I'm, I'm faster on a on a PC. That's very cool. Very cool. And then, um, do you use the old Trails app to to find trails? Do you know that one? Uh, yes, I, I downloaded that one. It's pretty good. Yeah, I used it in yeah. BC actually when I was visiting yeah. a few months ago. Yeah, a bunch of apps for for hiking and uh, for uh, climbing also. Like I'm, I do a lot yeah. of rock climbing. Uh, yeah. So in rock climbing, you have those, uh, we call them topos. They're like guidebooks, yeah. uh, but now okay. they make uh, digital uh, guidebooks and I, I really like that. Oh. It's great. They, ha- they have a bunch, of, a bunch of apps for that too. And uh, yeah, it's awesome. Very cool. I noticed you have some books behind you. Uh, do you have any favorite like books or magazines or podcasts that you follow and, and that you recommend for, for those in marketing? I listen to a lot of podcasts. I think podcasts are awesome, and uh, you know, congrats on on your your show slash podcast. That's that's a, you know, it's a, it's a great thing that you you guys are doing. But um, I think um, you know, you have people who are more visual and people who are mm-hmm. more auditive. I'm mm-hmm. not sure if I'm using the right word. I think so. Yeah. Uh, but I'm I'm very auditive. So podcasts mm-hmm. for me are awesome i i retain information um yeah. you know just audio and uh that that's a, a good way for me to uh, to learn and you know when i when i drive when i um, i'm yeah. hiking when i i do cross country mm-hmm. skiing whatever there's always time for me to listen to podcasts so that then there's mm-hmm. a lot of podcasts that i i really like uh, mm-hmm. in an array of uh, different topics uh in the business world i pulled up my uh Google Play. That oh well, mm-hmm. Google Play is another app. Like Google Play Music is another app oh, that yeah. I use every day, um, mostly for for podcasts. Um, yeah. In the business world, I really like the SaaS podcast. The fact that okay. I'm a SaaS uh, marketer <laughs> is great. Yep. Uh, but you know they have they have great hosts, uh, a great guest over there. Like you know people from Intercom and uh, the people yeah. from. Um, you know, uh, SaaS that we use uh, every day. Uh, so that's that's a great podcast. It's just called the SaaS podcast. Okay. Um, I really like how how I built this. I don't know if you. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. a great one. It's, a great it's from one. NPR. Like I, I listen to a lot of oh, NPR yeah. stuff, but uh, that guy yeah. is great, uh, Guy Raz, and he has you know yeah. awesome guests also. Um, then you have you know classics like um, Tim Ferriss, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's you know you can't can't uh, can't go wrong. Um, I listen to a lot of you know other stuff. 
like MMA stuff, um, yeah. climb, you know, rock climbing stuff. Like there's now podcasts yeah. for every niche market. It's so awesome. Oh yeah. Um, I like uh, free economics. I like smart yeah. money. Um, yeah. stuff you should know, you know, like really, really broad, yeah. broad stuff. And I just like to, you know, sometimes it's super random, but I, yeah. I, I learn, I learn new stuff. Very cool. So Antoine, you're in a, you're in a really cool position in that your product works with so many agencies, so many brands uh, right across the country. I'd love to hear from your vantage point. What are some of the trends that you're seeing in marketing uh, with brands and, and even on the agency side? Yeah. Um, well, one thing that we can talk about, and I, I don't think I, I saw that coming, is that even though we're talking about technology, we're talking about, you know, online and, you know, it's, it's a connected world and um, mm -hmm. it kind of made the world like smaller, like we can collaborate mm -hmm. with people all around the world. At yeah, like look at us. We're so close here almost. <laughs> like I could touch you. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, at, at the same time, there's... There's there's a, a tendency like some uh, laws uh, legislations make it so that you know a lot of a lot of companies uh, agencies uh, associations all of that they want local suppliers even mm -hmm. though we're talking about software even though we're talking about mm -hmm. you know SaaS products um, yep. so I don't think I I saw how much it would be a plus for us to be a Canadian company. Mm, um, that's cool. You know, because of laws like like Castle, like Canada's anti-spam yeah. law, because of uh, the JDPR in Europe, there's yeah. there's a, a sense that we have to go back, like we expanded, mm -hmm. we became one yeah. big world, but we're kind of mm -hmm. you know coming back a little bit to uh, our own our own region or our our, yeah. our own country, and uh, yeah. it became a huge opportunity for us. So that's something that really caught me by surprise. Um, yeah. I don't know how I feel. I think it's probably like, like everything. There's a reaction now, like the, yeah. you know, the elastic band expanded and now it's coming back. Mm -hmm. And the, mm -hmm. the best position is probably somewhere in the middle, uh, because we do have to be, you know, worried about, you know, personal data and all that stuff. Um, yeah. But uh, the fact that we're Canadian, and you know, I, w I would I would never have thought that there would be room. There would be a market for a Canada Canada based email marketing platform. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah. But you know, uh, so that that's one trend that caught me by surprise and I think it's 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 really there and it's there in Europe also and it's there in Australia and it's there in Canada, probably in the United States also. Yeah. Um so local um uh solutions uh for local companies, yeah. There's a lot of movement around the whole buy local, right? So, you know, uh, buy your food local, know where your food came from, know where your products come from, your clothing. So do you feel like a camaraderie then with like um, Hootsuite as a social media management tool based in Vancouver, Unbounce based in Vancouver? Like, do you, do you feel that connection of like we're software based in Canada yeah. as a Canadian option? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That, that's exactly our, our positioning. Uh, it's part of our of our positioning mm -hmm. because I mean, let's face it, we have a lot of competitions. We have a lot of players mm -hmm. because it's a it's not a it's not a novelty email marketing. Mm -hmm. There's some improvements. There's always improvements. Always, you know, it's mm -hmm. always evolving. But as a whole, it's it's not a new industry. It's not a new category. Yeah. Um, you know, it's 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 pretty. Um, yeah, it's 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 pretty old and it's established. Um, yeah. So it's it's easy to be like just a commodity, like, you know, just, yeah. oh, well, it doesn't really matter if you use Cyber Impact mm -hmm. or, you know, someone else. Um, yeah. But uh, so, yes, we have to find ways to be different. But mm -hmm. uh, the fact that we have, you know, like local servers and all the emails are mm -hmm. sent from Canada and we're better with Castle and all of that, it, it became for a lot of organizations like we have, you know, mm -hmm. we have a lot of clients and, and our customers and, and we're growing. So that became almost like enough of a reason to, to choose an option like Cyber Impact. So I think it's true in all kinds of industries and in all kinds of categories for sure. So would you say then, like factually speaking, if I um, have a, an organization with some pretty sensitive data, whether I'm in university, a bank or, a, you know, whatever I am, even, a, you know, I sell cat sweaters. Yeah. And I've chosen to use an email software that maybe the mascot is, say, a llama or a monkey or, or some other animal. Um, 
uh, that's based out of the U.S. Would my contacts and the information be stored in the USA? Uh huh. Okay. Interesting. Even though I'm a Canadian organization. Oh yeah, yeah. No, of course. Yeah, I mean, some some companies like you know big big companies. We were we were having that discussion um, yesterday. We were talking about you know cloud options like you know SaaS software. They will often go with Amazon are like, you know, Google for their, um, for the cloud. Um, so, and I ask, is, is, is there like a Canadian option if you go with Amazon? Mm -hmm. Apparently there is, or it's starting to, to be okay. something that, that, that they offer. So, you know, big worldwide organizations, mm -hmm. they will become more uh, spread out and not just mm -hmm. uh, in the US. Uh, but mm -hmm. for most of your software, most of the SaaS that you're using every day, you, you, you can't call them and say, I want to be, you know, I want all of my customers' data to be hosted in Canada. You know, that's not something yeah. that's available. So just do your research, you know, and, and, and make, make your, your, your choices accordingly. Um, yeah. But yeah, of course, if, if, you know, if most of your customers are in Canada and they want to know where their data is stored and they, you know, they, people are more and more sensitive about that and they will ask you yeah. questions about that. Um, so yeah, maybe you you should consider, you know, going with the Canadian, um, option. Yeah. Cool. Uh, one trend that we're seeing where reaching people organically through Facebook, Twitter, and other social media methods is becoming a lower and lower percentage of people being reached and touched. So what we're seeing a trend is, and what we're, we're slowly seeing is people are starting to realize the value of collecting email addresses and the value of having an email address. Can you speak to that, the difference between growing a social following versus growing an email list? Yeah, yeah, of course. Well, yeah, it's, I think it's you that said that, you know, social media is nice and it's not going away, but it's pretty much pay to play. All right? so, mm -hmm. so if you want to actually have a good reach, and especially if you want to grow your reach, like you want to talk to like new people you you have to mm -hmm. pay so it's it's you know it, it, it became a paid channel nothing wrong with that mm -hmm. but it's a paid channel uh, in terms of uh, acquisition um you know i don't know what are the late, latest stats but even if you have 1000 fans on facebook and you post something mm -hmm. you'll probably be happy if you have you know a few a few percents uh, mm -hmm. of reach and um, on the email side uh, if you have 1000 subscribers and you send an email mm -hmm. and it has a good you know a good a good title and and it's enticing and all that mm -hmm. it's it's not super surprising to have 30 40 50 60% you know open rate um, so and I know it's it's probably harder, or or there's a perception that it's harder to uh, get emails, uh, but I think it still makes sense. Like it was it was the case I told you when I was starting to learn about uh, mm -hmm. email marketing. It was like 12 mm -hmm. years ago, and we we're all like, mm -hmm. it was all it, it was only like the internet marketers, you know, the people mm -hmm. who were selling ebooks and stuff that were using Aweber and that uh, th those type of products. Um, mm -hmm. But it's still very relevant today. Like we thought social media. Was would kill email it's not the case they go they go hand in hand um, and uh, it's it, it makes sense to invest money time and effort into building an email list like be on social media be there but send send some of the traffic back to your website and have some people fill out forms you know whether mm -hmm. and you have to give you know it's 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 content marketing 101 but give something mm -hmm. like maybe mm -hmm. you give away an ebook it's it's maybe mm -hmm. you give away an online course like a, a series mm -hmm. of videos and people have to opt in through uh, through email um, mm -hmm. if you have a, like a physical uh, presence like you know ask for the email address but mm -hmm. do it in an, in an enticing way do you want to be yeah. part of the VIP club oh what's that oh you mm -hmm. give us your email address and we'll send you uh, you know coupons and, and, and information yeah. that is not found anywhere else you know you have to mm -hmm. make it you know appealing um, but 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 yeah, I think it's 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 really worth it to um, to build your uh, your email address, uh, your email list. Like email is probably the best way to share your content, um, mm. and and um, you know content can be articles, but content is more and more video. I think you guys mm -hmm. at Jelly, you do a lot of video for your clients mm -hmm. and for your own brand. And uh, mm -hmm. yes, of course you're gonna publish that on social media, but you're mm -hmm. still going to um, let your, um, your fans know about that through mm -hmm. email. And, uh, yeah. I was, I'm actually like shooting a tutorial today on how to include a video directly into your emails so that some of your subscribers will be able to just open the email, 
click the the play button mm. and the email will uh, uh the the video will play directly in in their email inbox oh, versus jumping to youtube yes exactly so that so that's pretty cool and that's one of the trends that uh, you, I think we will see that more and more in, in 2019 and so on, uh, because it's all done through HTML5. Okay. And the thing is that not all uh, email clients, email software, yeah. Um, yeah. will support HTML5 yet, but I think it's coming. I think HTML5 and more interaction mm -hmm. uh, and video content inside of mm -hmm. emails is the future of, of email. Um, so that, that means like videos, that means, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like maybe, uh, forms that people can fill yep. out directly in the email. It means yep. menus and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, so, so yeah, more interactivity inside of the email, but the thing that is maybe, um, an obstacle to that mm -hmm. is not HTML five. It's the support of, you yeah. know, those, uh, old school email clients like Outlook. Uh, or Hotmail. Yeah, yeah. Outlook, right? I, I was yesterday in our office. One of our team members uh, was showing me her email. And I was like, Outlook? You used to use Outlook? And I was like, she's like, oh, it's my old Hotmail address that I keep it because it has all my contacts. And I was like, that is amazing because I remember Hotmail from like 1999. Yeah. Yeah. We have to still, you know, deal with that, the, the, the okay. um, e email clients. Um, but more and more, all of them will support HTML5. That's where it's, it's going. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it's, uh, it's worth it. You can include like a short video inside of your, uh, of your emails and, uh, maybe somewhere like half of your subscribers might be able to, uh, to render it directly in the e inbox. Yeah. That's, that's pretty awesome. cool. So Antoine, I, um, let's say I'm a brand or I'm a agency and my client or my, my brand has got like 10, 20, 30% open rate and I want to get it up another 10% open rate. So that's my first question. What's the trick to getting more opens? And then my next question is, my click rate is like five, 10% click rate. How do I get another 5% of click rate? So I wanna up my open rate and I wanna up my click rate. What's your tips on those two things? Well, the, the click rate, or no, not the click rate, the open rate will pretty mm. much be all about your uh, subject line. Okay. Uh, so we wanna keep it short short subject okay. line because a lot of people are using their mobile phones obviously yeah. and a long a long uh, subject line will be truncated so it has mm -hmm. to you know grabs people attention um okay. and and you know it's it's also i would have to look at you know what are you sending are you only sending yeah. you know sales messages yeah. it might be good sometimes but if we're not if i'm not in the buying mood uh it won't mm -hmm. be enough like are you sharing like interesting content with me like mm -hmm. how to's or help me discover something or help help me laugh you know it's basically mm -hmm. it's um something useful uh mm -hmm. something entertaining yeah or as a, you know a, a sales message but you have okay. to not you know alternate between between the three and 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 those those everything uh but you know short enticing titles yeah. Um, you can also make sure that you, um, make use of the preview text. So, yeah. um, you know, it'll be the, 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 the line of text that you can yeah. preview. Yeah. Um, you know, make, so sometimes by default, it's like the first sentence of your email. So if, if that's mm -hmm. what it is, you know, you know, that make sure that you, it's something really enticing. Maybe it's a question, you know, it might be mm -hmm. <laughs> something like that. Um, cool. also the name, like. What, yeah. what name is it? I, I see sometimes yeah. it's like info at something, yeah. something. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's better if it's, uh, you know, Darian at jelly, something like that, yeah. you know, okay. um, and, and, uh, you can, you can AB test those, those, uh, okay. type of things. And, uh, sometimes just a matter of, Whoa, what's that? Um, but sometimes I see people going too far in that direction. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. it's a really enticing title. But then the, it's, it's a trickery, you know, it's, a, it's mm -hmm. they trick you into yeah. clicking. So then the problem is that you're increasing your, maybe your open rate, but then your, mm -hmm. your click rate uh, ah. will be, you know, <laughs> will be down, will be bad because it, has, it still has to match uh, expectations. Um, okay. when, it, when, it comes, when it comes to click rate, make sure that people have a, a reason 
to mm. to click like i see sometimes people giving too much away in the email mm. like basically okay. the email will be a very long email with yeah. like the whole article or something is in there okay it's it's okay if, if that's your goal if you want people to read yeah. what you have to say now um, yeah. But if you want people to go back to your website, then, you know, maybe just an ext uh, extract uh, and then a big, a big button to go read, read, read what's next or to okay. claim the offer or to um, watch the video like we like we just said. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, right. you know, urgency is good too if mm -hmm. uh if if but if it's true. Right. If if there yeah. is only two spots left. Yeah. yeah make sure to, to say it, uh, but it has to be true. You know, don't say there's two spots left and yeah. make 200. <laughs> yeah. So Anton, I have a question. I've run into people all the time who are uh, bought into constant contact or are using the MailChimp, which I think it's okay for us to j jump right in there and talk about these. Yeah, yeah. What would you say as a, as a Canadian SaaS product, what, do you, what would you say like in a concise way to people who are using Constant Contact, using MailChimp, because it's just what they found online, it's kind of the majority of the, the email service providers, what would you say to them is like, why should you switch to Cyber Impact straight from the source? Yeah, thanks for giving me that, that opportunity. I actually have a little story to tell you about Constant Contact, and I, I don't want to badmouth any of the competitors. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're great products, uh, but it's... It's a, a customer of, our, of ours that told me that, that, uh, that exact thing. Um, the thing is, I think Constant Contact completely missed the mark when it came to dealing with Castle, Canada's anti-spam law. Mm -hmm. Basically, um, for, uh, overnight, they said you, you cannot email people uh, towards whom you don't have an express consent. Mm -hmm. Even though you might have a valid... Uh, mm -hmm. implied consent like those people mm -hmm. can be your customers like mm -hmm. active customers you do have yeah. the right to email them they for them i think it was just simpler to say from now on you can mm -hmm. only email people uh who have uh, you know given you an express consent so mm -hmm. that client had had maybe ten thousand you know names mm -hmm. in his uh email list mm -hmm. He was sending emails to all of those those people, and he was wondering why he had such low open mm -hmm. rate and click through rate. It's mm -hmm. because the system was not sending his emails to everyone. It was like sending mm -hmm. emails to maybe two thousand of those ten thousand. Wow. Okay. So that was like incredible, and that's like a company wide policy. Like I yeah. think Canada is too small for them, and it, they didn't yeah. bother. Uh, you know, making the distinction between the different types of consents. Mm -hmm. um, so that guy switched over to Cyber Impact, and now like his stats are incredible. Like it made a huge difference uh, in his business because he's really dependent on mm. uh, email marketing. He organizes events, and the best way yeah. to invite people to okay. events is through email for sure. Um, oh, yeah. So that's content contact. Uh, I think I think Mailchimp is great. I use Mailchimp, you know, in my life uh, a lot. I think what they have going for them is that they connect to everything. So yeah. if you have a Shopify website, if yeah. you have like any any app that you use online, if there's a possibility of connecting it to an email uh, software, like their default or their like built-in. Um, uh, integration with, will be with, uh, with MailChimp. So that thing, that's why a lot of people start using MailChimp. And uh, if it works for you, great. Uh, if you're, like, a, like you're a small organization or you're like a freelancer or something, you're just mm -hmm. you know, getting started, they have a great free offer. So mm -hmm. I, I got to give, give it to them. Um, now, if you care about where your customer's data is stored like we mentioned before if you mm -hmm. if it's important to you and your customers to make sure that their personal data is stored in Canada uh, and it's more and more uh, a policy for a lot of mm -hmm. uh, the different different trades and different mm -hmm. uh, even government bodies that that go with us because of that fact uh, then you know cyber impact is, is is there for you you'll be able to do all of the things you do with Mailchimp but you'll know that you know all the data is stored in Canada, and all of the emails are sent from Canadian servers, uh, also, uh, which might help your uh, delivery rate. Uh, okay. Yeah. When you mention integrations, um, is it not true that the tool Zapier allows Cyber Impact to have all the same, if not you know just as many integrations as Mailchimp? 
So yeah, tell us about Zapier, Zapier and your relationship. That's, that's a great point. So if you don't know about Zapier, <laughs> go check it out because it's a, it's a lifesaver. It's it's a great yeah. tool, and you know just yeah. listening to this uh, show, uh, if the only thing you learn is about Zapier, it was still you know yeah. completely worth it. So Zapier.com, it's great. You can integrate a bunch and it's always growing they're probably like mm -hmm. at 500 600 different apps or yeah. web services that you can integrate together and the mm -hmm. uh, cyber impact has an integration so let's say you have a crm or i don't mm -hmm. know you have an uh, an online store or a, a yeah. pos a system yeah. a point of sales uh, you can integrate most of them with cyber impact through zapier and not only cyber impact with a bunch of other you know, web apps that mm -hmm. you're, you're probably uh, using, like Google Drive or something like that. Um, and we also have an API. So we have some maybe, you know, uh, slightly bigger organizations that have mm -hmm. the resources to invest a little bit of, a, of, of time to integrate directly. Like, let's say they have a custom made CRM. Well, they'll have someone uh, at, at their, at their, in their, uh, on their team that can integrate mm -hmm. directly with our API. That's awesome. So Antoine, uh, final question yeah. uh, that I, I'd like to know. Um, if someone visits Montreal, what, it, what is one thing they have to do when they visit Montreal? <laughs> you know, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and it's, it's just because you ask. I mean, it's not, it's not a, a plug for me or anything like that, but uh, um, as a part-time gig, just because I like the outdoors so much, and it's not yeah. it's not for the money that I do that. It's just because I like to share my passion mm -hmm. with other people. On weekends, um, I I host Airbnb experiences. Um, so if you come during the winter, I have a hiking yeah. experience. I. I I drive you just outside of the of the city, so it's nice for people who want to take a break from the city. Mm -hmm. We go into like a nice little mountain. We we hike yeah. through a forest. We rappel yeah. down a cliff, so it's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's a nice day outdoors. And if you come during the the summer, I can bring you rock climbing. So uh, wow, yeah. Look Very for good. Montreal Airbnb experiences, and the outdoorsy okay. stuff is provided by me. And then can we have some like poutine and have some uni brew after? Yes, of course, uni brew poutine. When, when I do the hiking experience, yeah. uh, on that mountain, there's a, a sugar shack. So I bring okay. people to yeah. like a super yeah. like Quebec, um, yeah. very, um, very old school uh, sugar shack, mm -hmm. and they can try the maple syrup and all that stuff. Yeah. Okay, very cool, very cool. Any, any last thoughts or uh, anything else you want to share just as we wrap it up here? No, I think... Uh, I think I think that's all. I think uh, you know, invest some time in in email marketing. Um, you know, try out the new formats. Like I said, HTML5 is 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 the way the way of the future. Um, mm -hmm. And if you're not using uh, marketing automation, which is something that we we haven't talked about today, but um, you know that the things that big companies are have been using for a long time, you know, like Amazon and stuff like that. Mm -hmm are now available to small businesses as well. Mm -hmm. So take advantage of them. It's not that complicated. And, uh, you know, automate some of that, uh, that marketing. Very cool. Well, Antoine, it was an honor to have you on here. And I, and I think for those our listeners, I think we're going to do a part two with Antoine as well, where we're going to talk about marketing automation. We're going to talk about the national survey. So Cyber Impact partnered with Vistaprint to conduct the largest survey of English and French speaking uh, small to medium business owners across the country. The results are incredible. Uh, so look for part two, but this was amazing. Antoine, thank you for your time. Thank you for joining us today on the Marketing Jam show. And thanks for everyone for uh, joining us today. Au revoir. Pleasure.